Hey guys, it's Hantabis, and uh, I apologize for any noise in the background. My lipo charger is going off and the cooling fan's on. But for you, Tamiya guys, I finally have a another Tamiya video for you guys. Um, a lot of you have been asking me uh, to feature some of my Tamiyas again, and finally, I have a reason to show you one of my Tamiyas. Um, here is my beloved Blackfoot. My lovely, lovely girlfriend got me this for uh, my birthday. Um, the first year we were together. So, definitely a really special, uh, special car in my collection. Also, it has this old, like, bullnose Ford body on it, which I think is a really cool looking truck. And it has these MCI decals and the wheels painted and stuff, so... Uh, just both in its aesthetics and just the, 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 um, circumstances of which I acquired it and just the overall, like, chassis and just look of it. It's just a, a truck I really, really like. Um, it's definitely one of my favorite trucks. And, unfortunately, it is broken. Um, the, if I'll plug in this battery right here turn my radio on set it to my black foot should be in here somewhere there it is and then turn this guy on I will pull the trigger uh oh So there's definitely something up in the transmission. So um, this happened when I was driving it at my friend's track. That's meant for more modern RC cars. And I took it up a jump and it landed pretty hard, crashed. It tore the boots back here. Um, it tore the little drive shaft boots. It, and then it also seem to take out something in the transmission so initially i thought it was just because the dog bone popped out and the diff was just stiffing out um but i put the i fixed the drive shaft and clearly that wasn't the issue or the only issue so my little black foot is gonna go into a little bit of a surgery today it's a little bit dirty from the last time i ran it um it's definitely not a shelf queen so here we go, to get my little bag of tools out. Uh, I'm digging here for my trusty JIS screwdriver. And my old screwdriver that I use for all my Tamiya kits. Um, something, that, screw, that screwdriver is honestly probably older than I am. My parents brought it over from Korea. So, almost a fairly uh, family heirloom. And then, get out my little wheel wrench. Maybe a pair of pliers as well, just in case. There you go. So, let's dig into this thing. Um, I am actually going to take the body off just for a bit more ease of access. So, Start off by taking the wheels off. Just lower the camera over here. You can see I have my sport tune motor in here. The transmission does have the MIP ball diff in it, so I'm really hoping the part that's broken isn't the ball diff, because those ball diffs are pretty hard to find sometimes in stock. Um, and they are also pretty expensive. Which is why this one runs the ball diff, but my other ORV monster truck does not. And neither did my frog, or my, not my frog, my brat that I had previously. Um, so let's take these wheels off. Uh, you can see I also have the lunchbox tires on here. Um, I have a video on my channel talking about uh, that upgrade, because it is an upgrade. 
And I also have the drop that. Um I also have the aluminum hubs on there. They don't do anything. Uh the stock hubs work fine. I just have it on here just for just for bling, honestly. <clears throat> so take this apart. You want to unmount the motor. So here's the two motor mount screws. Oh already there's a potential issue where the motor mount screws are actually loose. Yeah, that one wasn't even attached, I don't think. So that's already an issue there. So the motor mount comes out. The pinion gear seems like it is solidly attached, so it's not the pinion gear shifting around. So that calls for a bit deeper investigation. Um, doesn't seem like any of the gears were stripping. I don't know. Uh, let's let's actually try this first. Um, because the uh, let's see, because the um, motor mount was loose. Let's see if this actually fixes the issue. Maybe it was just the motor that was loose and not contacting the the spur gear all the way or the diff gear all the way. Um, let's see if we can get this in here. Can I have this in here backwards? This way, maybe that way. And another one here. It's actually pretty easy to work on these, which is really nice. So that one doesn't seem to be going in, but this one is tight. So uh, maybe it's not the thread strip out or something. I'm gonna try putting this one in first. There we go. That one's threaded in. And then this one should just thread right in as well. That seems to be engaging, so let's actually try putting the battery back in again. This might have been the easiest fix ever. Um, turn the car on. And, once you get signal, there we go. Oh, it's driving, so I think it was literally just Literally just the motor mount. So if I hold these, will it still spin or try to? Yep. Add on. See if we'll try to knock this towel off the table. Oh, there we go. We're still having an issue. So it is spinning the drive shafts. But the truck still is not moving. So it is actually a deeper issue. All right, back off with the motor again. Motor mount off. And then we have to start undoing some of these other screws over here. So let's actually I'm going to unplug the motor so it doesn't flop around and get in the way. Unplug the motor. Spin this around. And let's start by taking off 
this bottom skid plate right here. So I took out all the screws in the transmission. So now it's time to actually detach the transmission from the car. And to do that, um, you have to take the rear suspension uh, trailing arms off. And I probably don't have to tell the majority of you guys how to do this because chances are, unless you bought it assembled and used, um, you built your you you built it yourself, so you already know how how it goes together. That's the nice thing about kits, I think, is um, since you put it together, <clears throat> it's really not too difficult for you to figure out how to um, take it apart and work on it. I don't think that's appreciated um, that much these days. Just how much um, building your own kit and putting it together yourself helps. In the long term, just with your overall enjoyment, I think, um, with your car, because um, you feel a bit more accomplished with it, because you put it together yourself. Um, and then, when it does break, because in this hobby it will break, things will break, it's just inevitable. Um, you actually know how it goes together, and you actually know it inside and out already. So you don't need people like me to tell you, oh, you got to take this screw out and that screw out. Um, but just in case there's any of you that, that are watching um, that did get it pre-assembled somehow, um, hopefully this helps. So taking the other bracket off for the trailing arm. It's probably not too There we go. While we're in here though, you, can, you notice I put some weights on the transmission, the bottom of it. Um, and that just helps, that's just to help with the, uh, uh, what is it? To help with, hmm. to help with uh, lowering the center of gravity a little bit so it flips over a little bit less. To undo this zip tie right here. Okay. So, so that's off. That's the diff right there. Um, and then I just have this one last screw. So here we have that infamous uh, Blackfoot ORV transmission. Um, it's just basically two stamped plates of aluminum with a plastic piece sandwiching sandwiching in, in between them um, so let's take the plate off and take all the gears out and see what is actually going on with this thing um, so it's essentially just a two gear transmission so those parts coming off it's literally just this spur gear and then this diff gear. So it seems like the diff is fine. It's got hair in that. Um, yeah, it seems like the diff is fine. Um, yeah, the diff is working fine. The gears in it don't look like they're damaged or anything. Um, Yeah, so I don't think that's the issue. Over here. Um, these transmission gears also do not look damaged. Huh. So maybe it's not a problem in the transmission. Maybe it is a problem elsewhere. It can't be the drive shafts because they're dog bones. Um, and I just replaced those. Yeah, and the dog bones are fine. So it's not those. 
So if it's not that, what could it be? That shaft is fine. That shaft is also fine. So it does not seem like it is the transmission gears, which is perplexing. Um, I'm going to try to put this transmission back together. That is curious indeed. So um, it does look like it won't be as simple as just replacing these gears because I can't, it's not very clear to me um, what's wrong with it yet. So that gear is fine. Is this gear? My inner gear is fine too. So yeah, it's not clear, like immediately clear to me what's wrong with it. The diff does not seem like um, it's damaged or slipping or anything. I think this is gonna require further investigation. So I am just putting the truck back together. Um, I couldn't see anything obviously wrong with it. Um, so I'm going to try to put it back together and see if the problem persists. Um, and also, uh, just a quick tip for you guys. For these, a lot, uh, um, like especially Tamiya kids and a lot of other RCs as well, use these self-tapping screws. If you have self-tapping screws that go, that's going into plastic, don't just crank them and just tighten them in there because you have you risk cutting new threads into the plastic and eventually it will just strip them out. So to prevent that, you want to actually... Um, uh, go uh, reverse until you feel the screw drop into the existing threads. Like that. And then when you thread it in, you'll know that it's threading into the existing holes because it'd be, it, it'd be um, it's very loose uh, as it like, um, as you screw it in. Um, like there's very little resistance as you screw it in. Um, it almost feels like you're screwing it into a machine thread uh, hole. If you have to put a lot of like force into it, that means you're cutting new threads and you want to abort and try to find the, the original threads again. And that will help you um, help your uh, chassis and all the plastic parts last a lot longer, especially with stuff you work on um, frequently. Uh, so yeah, I'm just putting all the bearings back in, all the drive shafts back in. My suspicions are that it will still have the same problem since I didn't really change anything or fix anything. But occasionally, um, when you take it apart and put it back together, you release whatever gremlin was in there. And uh, it just magically starts working again. So I'm hoping for that right now. Um, I don't, I don't find it super likely, but I don't, I just couldn't see anything else wrong with the transmission. Um, so this is what I'm resorting to at the moment. So here I have the truck put all back together and it does seem like it was one of those cases where there was just a weird mechanical gremlin. Um, so I have it. I literally did not replace any parts. All I did was take it apart, put it back together. And you can see the wheels are spinning now. And when I have it on the ground, it is attempting to go. If I hold the tires down and just pull the tr uh, trigger. There's a straining from the motor and the transmission, nothing's spinning. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what was wrong with it. All I did was take it out and just clean the gears a little bit and it seems to be working now. So, um, sometimes stuff ends up, uh, sometimes uh, just unexplainable 
issues like that. But I am glad it's fixed now, so I am able to drive it again. Um, so that's very exciting. So I'm going to put the rest of this back together and look out for uh, a new video with my Blackfoot coming up pretty soon. I have some tips and tricks about my Blackfoot and just the ORV monster trucks in general, um, but more particularly the, uh, the, uh, the Blackfoot. So if you guys are interested in seeing that video, uh, please subscribe, comment down below, give me a like. Oops, sorry for moving the tripod again. But um, and all that good YouTube shenanigans and I will see you guys next time.